Now that our file system is uploaded and our database has been created, to begin installing our site, we simply navigate to our domain and we'll see a page like this. Choose the language and we'll click save and continue. We're going to go with the standard installation profile. And here are the requirements for our site. We have a couple warnings here. These aren't crucial, so we're not going to worry about those. If you have any errors, you will need to take care of those before you continue. Uh, we can't address all of the errors that you might see on the screen, but some of them you may have to contact your web host to take care of those. Since we have no errors and our warnings are not that important here, we're going to continue. And here we need to put in our database information for the database that we created earlier. We're going to type in the name of the database. For me, it was ostray5 underscore install tut. This is going to be different for you depending on what you named your database. And then the database username, this is the name of the user that we created that can access the database. That was ostray 5 robert And then the password for that database user. Once you've put all that in, click Save and Continue. And then you'll get this installation bar. And once the actual installation of the site is complete, it's going to ask us to provide some information for the configuration. First and foremost, we're going to need to give our site a name. We'll go with Drupal installation is easy. And you have to give it a site email address. This is the default email address that the site uses to send uh, update messages to and things like that. Then you need to create a username for the site maintenance account. For the username here, it can be tempting to type in admin, but that's generally discouraged for security reasons. I'm going to use installation manager. Just something that can be vague, but different from just admin. We'll put in a password. And you can set your default country if you'd like. You don't have to. Same for the time zone. Check for updates automatically and receive email notifications. I always recommend leaving this checked. This can create problems if you do uncheck this. So only uncheck this if you really know what you're doing and there's a very specific reason you don't want your site to automatically check for updates. Note that this is only checking for updates automatically. Checking this box will not install updates automatically. With all that done, we'll click Save and Continue one last time. And now our Drupal site is installed.